ladies and gentlemen, bringing back the wonderful Amy Sky. Wow, that was an amazing performance. Amazing. Thank you, Rudy. So fun. Did you guys notice I don't have a drummer here tonight? Did you notice? Actually, yeah. I, actually, I was thinking about that, too. No drummer. Why? Um, you know, it's actually... First of all, this venue is such a listening room. I think it's better. this is a good venue to not have drums in, but it really gives you a chance to... Um, dig into the songs and um, just to express them in a different way. And anybody miss the drummer? No? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. He's gone. All right. <laughs> you know, the other thing I was trying to figure out, too, was were you going to do, like, different hairstyles? Because at one point you had your hair up and you started doing that little bun thing. And I'm going, am I going to see, like, three or four different hairstyles? I mean, this must have been from your Nashville days or something. You know what? It's simply uh, thermodynamics. Just hot. I'm just <laughs> hot. <laughs> He's a man. He wouldn't understand girls, right? No. no. I don't, don't even Thank goodness. get me started. First, I got to say congratulations on a... Hold on. What do you got there? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Are Pay you no sure? I'm not going to get tased or something. No. Ah. <laughs> there we go. It's hot under these lights. Yeah, it is hot. No, well, no you make it hot. You I'm definitely, hot under these lights. <laughs> you definitely make it hot. I, well, I was just about to ask, though. I mean, did you ever think that when your career started and uh, the people you ended up working with throughout the uh, journey, your musical journey, did you ever think your career would turn out the way it has? Um, that's a really good question. I think at, at different points in my career, I had different ideas about what it was going to be. Um, I know because I moved to the States right out of university and um, I was being groomed for American and international success by the American record companies while I was there. So that was sort of one path that, that could have happened that actually didn't happen. Um, even though I had a chance to experience what it was like to do the whole behind the scenes thing being signed to major record labels in the States. Um, but one thing I knew that I... I always wanted to keep doing was just creating music. That is the most important thing to me. That's my buzz, is that the writing is actually my buzz. I mean, I love the performing is great too, but it's the creating of the new stuff that um, I never want to lose. So the fact that I'm able to still do that, I just feel very, very blessed. That really comes from home life. And I have to say this too, because just recently I was allowed in their home. And uh, <laughs> yes, they allowed me in their home. And... We were having a meeting, and her kids were actually adults were there, and everybody in their household is singing. There's somebody's in one room singing, and somebody <laughs> else is another one. True. And while we were sitting there and talking, you know, I'm trying to tell her something, trying to tell Amy something. <laughs> Amy's like, Yeah, Rudy, and then suddenly it's la 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 la. And she's singing away, <laughs> and then she's continuing the conversation. A lot of love, a lot of song in the uh, household. My eyes were glazing over because Zoe and Ezra, their harmonies are amazing. And I just, it's hard for me to, I'm a little ADD that way. I can't concentrate. <laughs> Someone's talking and there's music on. I'm like, ah. <laughs> And I do, um, you know, I forget, I don't know if it was, somebody asked me in an interview last week what music I listen to. And honestly, the music that my kids and Mark make is actually my favorite music of other people. I know that sounds like a, it's not true, but it is. I, I, we, 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 have a, we have a similar musical taste. I think that's what it is. Well, it definitely works because everybody loves the music, correct? <laughs> but at the same time, though, with all the, the love and the great music that you're putting out there, um, there were still some dark clouds over your head. You've been through a lot personally, too. Yes, I have. And... Um, I actually have been pretty um, public over the last, I guess it's been about six or seven years, um, about my, my struggle with po postpartum depression initially. And the only way I let the public know about that was actually in my song, I Will Take Care of You. Um, in the first verse where it says, uh, the mother says to the daughter, darling, I'm just as scared as you, but I promise you somehow, I will take care of you. That was my very veiled reference to 
the fact that when I became a mother, it wasn't it wasn't easy for me. It wasn't that sort of fantasy I had about you know, you know, Disney squirrels and clouds and you know, little deers helping you change the diapers and everything. No, that didn't happen. I don't know. I just read the wrong book. Um, so, and I was never. In fact, that whole thing happened before I was a. I'd launched my performing career actually. And I never wanted to talk about it because it was in the past and I thought, you know, it was something private and, and frankly, embarrassing. Uh, I think postpartum depression is one of maybe the most least uh, conditions that people present with the least to doctors because women, there's so much fear and misinformation and misunderstanding about it. And what happened was um, in 2006, I was just invited to be the performer at the Mood Disorders of, uh, Association of Ontario, they had an award show. And they just wanted me to come and sing uh, f after the award show. They had no idea I had any history with mood disorders. And as each person in the, um, uh, 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 what are they called, the board of directors, they introduced themselves to me by their mood disorder. Wow. So got, Frank came up and said, hi, I, I'm Frank. I'm, a, I'm an alcoholic. I, I won't be drinking tonight. And then Mary's like, hi, I'm Mary. I'm, I'm bipolar. I won't be having any coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, can, can we talk about this? I didn't know this was cocktail party chatter. I felt like I was in one of those Will and Grace episodes, you know, <laughs> when Grace introduces Will to her family and she says, uh, Will, this is Aunt Bertha, bursitis, uh, Uncle Fred, arthritis. Or... <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, I have a mood disorder too. <laughs> no, I, wasn't exactly, I was thinking that. And I wasn't planning on saying anything, but after the show, they were honoring people in the community that were um, giving back, who were advocating, who were researching, who were supporting those with mood disorders. And when I it was my turn to sing, um, and I got to that song, I thought I knew what that song was about. I'd never told anyone. And I thought, well, I can share with this crowd. I'll, I'll tell people the, the truth behind the song. And you could have heard a pin drop. You, I mean, they were like, oh, you're one of us. <laughs> and... Um, so after that um, performance, there was some media there, and, and they asked me if I would speak about my experience with, with postpartum depression, and I was like, no, no. I'll tell these people, because they're all crazy too. <laughs> but I'm not going to tell the whole world, because then I won't have any fans left, because I, I, was, I was not enlightened. My consciousness had not been raised that mood disorders are simply a physical and mental disorder, no different from having a kidney problem or breaking a leg. It's just the brain's a potty part. And I didn't know that. I thought I was a defective person for having gone through it. Well, if anybody has any questions, please, like I said, if you want, uh, just walk up to the microphone. If you have anybody over there yet, but uh, please feel free because this is what it's all about. It's uh, no holds barred. We're, you know, letting everything hang loose here tonight. So. And we waited till after intermission to make sure you'd had a couple of glasses of wine before we Absolutely. opened the mic up to you. Absolutely. Well, okay. you've been able to... Oh, do we have somebody? Yep. Oh, great. And can you give us your name, please? Hi, my name's Corinne, and I would actually really like you to sing that song tonight. Oh, oh you want me to sing I Will Take Care of You? Please. Yeah. Corinne, I think I can do that for you. Thank after you. After the interview. Thank you for that. I think we can manage that, right, guys? We can do that. Fantastic. <laughs> Well, you've been able to open up to everyone, not just through talking to people, but through other different forms. One is Alive and Awake. That's what it's all about. You know, um, one of the things that happened with that song, with I Will Take Care of You, is that because it's about the cycle of life, it's about birth and marriage and illness and, and death, um, I found that people were coming to my concerts to cry, knowing they were going to cry. And at first I was kind of nervous. I was saying to my manager, oh my God, everybody's crying. I, what, do I, what do I do? And he's like, no, no, that's a good thing. Um, and I actually talked to a friend of mine who's a music therapist um, who told me that songs, well, as a music therapist, she uses songs as a safe place for people to experience their emotions. And that there's nothing wrong with negative emotions. In fact, they only do damage when they are not expressed. And sometimes talking about it can be overwhelming. People don't know where to get started. But a song that provides people a sort of a safe three or four minute place to go and relive their, 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 their 
sad or unresolved, or even just the grieving feelings of loss is, is, is fantastic. It's, it's actually very therapeutic. So I wanted, when I understood that, and I realized that I had a choice that I could make with the songs I was going to record, um, and I realized how, um, how much music lifted me up, the right kind of music, every song on Alive and Awake is designed to engage people in a process of transformation. Yeah, it is all about, it's talking to, oh, please. You can clap. Go ahead, clap. clap. <laughs> Dialogue is very important about this, isn't it? Dialogue is how we learn. Well, that probably explains why you took Alive and Awake to, what was that? <laughs> Turn the TV off, oh. guys. I think we kind of figured that one out, what happened there. <laughs> I knew what the score was. I was upstairs because I heard the two loud cheers. Yeah. We're just getting right into just really intimate and then so, oh, oh, bad. I just said, don't, don't hold in your emotions. Hold them in. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have a newsletter, yes. which is very important. This is all about dialogue, too. It is. Um, like I said, for years, I didn't ever talk about my experience with mood disorders because um, I didn't know how, I didn't know where. I didn't know in what context I could without feeling labeled uh, in some way that I would feel uncomfortable with. And what I've found is that secrets only have a power if they're secret. And um, that there's so much that we can do. Anyone who's been through an episode of mood disorder, and that's one in five people, and I'm not going to start going duck, duck, goose in here, people, but... <laughs> Um, <laughs> statistically, there will be a few of you in this room that have accompanied me on this journey. And um, the, the sharing of information, the taking the stigma away, the understanding that there are things that we can do every day in our daily life, small practices that we can engage in that will create greater resilience uh, to either prevent a, an episode of mood disorder from reoccurring or to recover from one or really to recover from, from any kind of physical or mental uh, imbalance, um, we have to make a decision that we're going to engage in that and practice, in, and practice something that Sunnybrook Hospital calls self-care. And that's why we're partnered with them. That's fantastic. Give a big round of applause for that, folks. <laughs> now, something else I did not know that... Um, Toxins in our bodies or things that we use, products, can really affect us in negative ways too, can it? Yes, it's very true. And, and one, when I started researching um, how I could stay healthy myself, um, I actually learned a lot from cancer research. And in, in the forward-thinking um, cancer research of the day, talk about something called the terrain. If you want to stay healthy, body, mind, and spirit, you have to look at the terrain, body, mind, heart, and spirit. And even though we all know that uh, nutrition is important, maybe we don't know, but we should know that nutrition is important and the, and the proper supplements are important, something that a lot of people don't know is just what you wash your face with, what you wash your hair with, uh, the makeup you put on, any creams you put on your body, all of that can contribute to the toxin level in your body that can, that can predispose you to diseases like cancer and can also uh, be hormone disruptors and can also affect your mental health. So how does this, what you taught me, Arvin, never heard of about it before, never heard about this, but you explained it to me and I was like, wow, I never realized that. I got to a point, we're going to explain exactly what this is, but it got to a point where I have to check stuff out that I had, I'm going... Ooh, can't use this anymore. Ooh, can't use this anymore because I'm thinking, wow, this could actually affect uh, my life. You started being a label reader. There you go, and you got me started on yeah. it. So, uh, can I ask by um, uh, applause, are there any people from Arbonne here tonight? <laughs> yeah, I call them Arbonites now, so there you go. Arbonistas, so one or two. <laughs> so one of the great things about um, having put um, Arbon into my life is, um, is the community. Let's hear that community one more time. <laughs> <laughs> and this sense of community, you know, building a community with a newsletter, my Arbon community, um, it's people that have made a decision to build a community that is passionate about transforming their health, 
and transforming their lives. And it's really all about choices. We all have choices that we can make in life. And um, we can choose what we put in our body. We can choose what we put on our body. We can choose how we are employed, how we spend our time. Um, there's, with Arbon, there's also a way that you can actually uh, create your own business and then really have choices about how to design where you're employed and how you're employed. So, Does it make a difference, really? It has made an enormous difference in my life. It will be uh, five years in June that I started uh, with Arbonne. And, um, well, my Arbonne money paid for my CD, Alive and Awake. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's funding my creative life. Um, it has absolutely changed my health. And it's also changed my mental health because I'm, I'm surrounded by positive, noisy people. Yeah. <laughs> People who are excited, people who um, have uh, a servant's heart, who, who, who really um, make it their business to want to help other people, help other people be healthier and happier. So that's a great community to be, be a part of. I'm really, really excited about it. I want to check again. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to... Just... Right. Can and, I see? And I also just want to say that um, if any of you have no idea what we're talking about, and you saw one of those excited, crazy people with really good skin waving their hands around. After the concert, you can tap someone on the shoulder and say, what, what is exactly you're talking about? So you can, you can find out more about it that way. Yeah, just give your name and go over the Yeah, my name is uh, Nick Beat, and I interviewed you about a week ago. You did. Hi, Nick. I did. It's good nice to, to see, see your face. It's nice to see you, too. Uh, I wanted to, there was a question that I wanted to ask you. It's a personal question on uh, my show that I never really got to ask you, and I was wondering if I could ask you now. Sure, and if I was Mark up here, I know what he would say. He would just go like this. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that wasn't it. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm not a mind reader. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. I was just going to ask you if you could sign my CD of your new album. <laughs> uh, is that, that okay? That is easy. Yeah, I'll do that after the show okay. for sure. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. And Nick, I have to say, I saw funny because we were supposed to have another guest on the show that night, right? And you and I are talking on the phone, and I see on Facebook, Bob McKenzie, like, he couldn't get on the show because he was, like, driving in from Kingston. He had a car accident. I'm like, did you not tell him he could just call in? <laughs> Uh, yes, I did, but the trouble is he was trying to phone a CAA to pick him up and tow him, and they towed him to my um, oh, radio star. Oh, yeah, fine. they did. That is commitment. Well, it's so nice to meet you. This is Nick, Bic nice uh, Nick Beat of CIUT Radio, everybody. You guys Big round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. How do people learn more about this? Are there consultants or anything like that that people can talk to? Like, Are there work? consultants that people can learn <laughs> Okay, they're here. They're here. I got it, cuz I'm so happy to see you. It's really nice to have you here. Thank you for coming. We love you too. Love you too. Did you realize it was such a tight community like this before you got involved? Did well, you, you know it? what? It kind of wasn't. Um, yeah, I created the community. <laughs> Do you know what's so funny? This is actually a really good point. Um, I was brought into this by a music publisher, a uh, former music publisher of mine from, from Los Angeles, uh, Linda Blum Huntington. And when she told me like, that, that she was involved in this Arbonne community and maybe I wanted to you know, start it in Toronto, she said, you know, just invite it, like four girlfriends over. And I'm like, um, Linda, I don't have four girlfriends. <laughs> I, I, at the time, five years ago, I was like working full on music. And most, you can see most musicians I work with are men. I'm like, and I have my, you know, my family life and my music life. And I just had sort of let my social life last. But I said, lapse and I said to her, you know what? I, I actually could use a few girlfriends. I'd like a few more women in my life. And so be careful what you wish for. <laughs> well, I'm so glad that we had a chance to talk about all this. But I know we've still got more music that we have to perform. But before we go into that, I mean, there's got to be, you know, we've all got something inside that we need to just release. I mean, do you have a song do you think you can perform that's going to help us just get that release out, just get the wellness in and just let the bad out. Do you have a song or anything like that that can help? You know I do. Excellent segue, Rudy. Thank you so much. I love talking to you. A big hand for Rudy Blair. Thank you.